frosty how does this even look like he wants to have a chat little devil's way of torturing people has changed again nameless knee was going nuts from the torture sure no oh, i don't want to chat with you at all all right Seeing that Nameless Knee still hadn't hung up after some time, Anne coughed lightly and went to open the door. <clears throat> Captain Knee, if there's nothing else, I'll get going first. Nameless Knee hurriedly said, Oh, all right, all right. When Nameless Knee spoke to Anne, his phone shifted a bit and the little devil caught a glimpse of Anne on the video call. After Anne left, Nameless Knee resumed his conversation with the little devil. Uh, shall we continue chatting? The little devil looked at his uncle in disdain like he was looking at a mayfly. Until you find my parents, what's there to chat about? With that said, he ended the call. Nameless Knee was stupefied. Late at night, Chris was on a video call with Rose. S Sorry, Director Rose. I've failed. At first they thought that even if Anne took credit for this Myanmar trip, she still wouldn't be able to get a solid footing in the company. Little did they know that the goods handpicked by Rose would turn up empty and those rubbish raw stones that the other woman bought actually contained a top-grade imperial jade. Now the entire company was in an uproar about this. They were saying that if Rose went on the trip after all, or if they bought the goods Rose picked out, they definitely would have lost a fortune. Although everyone knew that gambling on stones depended on 70% luck, the woman was able to gain a little footing in the company through this project. It was a complete disaster. Damn it. How could that woman be so lucky? Steph gritted his teeth. Chris's face darkened. The days are still long. I don't believe she'll be so lucky every time. The calm and composed Rose was now slightly ruffled. Steph's eyes shifted as he leaned closer. <clears throat> Miss Rose, I don't know if I should say this. Rose, speak. Steph said, actually, no matter how aloof Darren is, you're so much better than that vixen in every aspect. Miss Rose, who is she to steal Darren's favor? She's only great at striving for love and seducing people, right? So Rose's lips curled into a sinister smile. So you mean you want me to be like that woman? Curry favor with Darren and strive for love? Chris immediately raged. Outrageous, Steph. What sort of person do you think Miss Rose is? A messy woman who fools around, huh? Steph panicked and hurriedly explained. No, 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 no. Oh, how could I think of her that way? Miss Rose is the future mistress of the household. How could she compare to those messy women outside? I was just worried that the vixen would come between Miss Rose and Darren and fall out of favor. Chris was enraged. Even if that woman is favored, she's just a plaything who uses her looks to seduce people. All right, that's enough. I know what to do. Rose interrupted the two of them and looked at Chris. Just give Darren whatever he likes. Do you still need me to teach you that, huh? Chris's eyes lit up and he hurriedly said, I got it. Take advantage of him or not. Mark didn't know how to answer this question. A few hours later, the plane arrived at Santa Clara Airport. In order to give Darren a surprise, Anne lied to him and told him she would only arrive in the middle of the night when actually she had booked an earlier flight on purpose. Gentlemen, thank you for your hard work. We will be parting ways here. I'd like to head back to give Chairman Aldera a report of the situation. Thanks for your efforts, Miss Sanchez, the Jade expert said. This trip altered the attitudes of these three people towards Anne. Behind her, Chris watched as Anne left and finally made a phone call. Anne is going back to Darren's place. Yes, you may head over now. On the way. Anne suddenly received a text message. It was from Daniel, who hadn't contacted her for quite some time. Friendly reminder, you've turned red. What does that even mean? I think I'm quite red now. Anne had a suspicious look and replied... What do you mean? Daniel. The literal meaning. Anne. What the hell? Daniel didn't reply anymore. Anne didn't think much about it and returned to Darren's place. Late at night, Kyle thought it was excessively demanding that someone from the subsidiary company actually delivered an urgent project proposal to him. This was quite normal and wasn't out of the ordinary. Darren mentioned that the proposal must be sent to him immediately once it was completed, no matter what the time was. But the problem was that the person delivering that proposal was slightly unusual. The secretary looked great, 
and had a fantastic figure. As it was already after office hours, she was in a more casual outfit. Her style of dress and mannerisms were extremely similar to Anne's. She even looked similar in appearance. Is this going to stir up trouble? Kyle thought about it and realized what was going on. Ever since Darren became the head of the household, many tried to push women onto him. However, due to Darren's irritable temper and hatred for women getting close to him, everyone gave up in the end. Since Miss Anne had been taking care of his health lately, Darren's temperament became gentler. Plus, with Miss Anne around, the rumors about Darren not liking women were gone and some people had started making moves. Kyle thought about it while he glanced into the study behind him. This time, those people were giving it their all. He really had to hand it to them for being able to find someone like this. They thought Darren fancied this sort of woman, so they attempted to find someone similar to Miss Anne to push her out. I'm back! Suddenly, Anne's voice came from the stairs, and Kyle, who was still deep in thought, was frightened out of his wits. Shit! What's going on? Isn't Miss Anne on a night flight? Why is she back now? Kyle was panicking as Anne made her way upstairs and walked in the direction of the study. The girl was dressed in a striking dark red dress. She was wearing a pair of white strappy heels and had a diamante milky white woolen coat over her shoulders. The soft curls of her hair draped over her shoulders lazily, and she looked extremely sweet and captivating. Although that woman in the house was dressed exactly like Anne, after seeing Anne, Kyle then realized what the difference was. If Anne was said to be a rose with a dewdrop under the moonlight, this woman was a fake flower made of plastic. Kyle, where's Darren? Kyle saw that Anne had already made her way to the door of the study. He started sweating profusely and hurriedly tried to remediate the situation for his master. Darren is uh, inside dealing with some business matters, Miss Anne. Uh, you've had a long journey. Why don't you go to the garden for a cup of tea and wait a little while? Oh, he's busy. Anne seemed a little sad, and she asked, Why do I have to go to the garden for tea? Obviously, it was because he was afraid Miss Anne would see something she shouldn't see if she entered the study. Even though Master is blind, what if that woman tries something, huh? How could it be such a coincidence that woman just entered and Miss Anne arrived almost right after? Kyle racked his brains for an excuse. Uh, because... Because the sunflowers in the garden are growing really well. Uh, they've started producing seeds. You can sip on some tea while admiring the beautiful blooms. Uh, but I miss your master. I'll just wait here. How much longer will he be? Anne asked. Kyle nearly broke down in tears. I'm not too sure about that. He'll probably take a long time, so, Miss Anne, you, you'd better take a seat and rest. At first... Kyle's words didn't sound suspicious, but Anne suddenly recalled the text message from Daniel. Kyle, are you hiding something from me? Anne asked. Kyle, no. Seeing how Kyle denied it so quickly, Anne's eyes narrowed. What's in there? Anne's gaze was simply too intense. Kyle felt like he couldn't handle it anymore. There's nothing, nothing at all. Anne chuckled. <laughs> Don't tell me there's a woman inside, eh? Kyle's heart skipped a beat, and he immediately said, How could there be a woman? No! What I mean is that the person reporting on the proposal inside is, in fact, a woman, but it's definitely not what you think. Anne, oh, why don't you tell me what I'm thinking? I'm dead. Why is this getting more and more out of hand? So, Daniel said I'm red. It means I've been cheated on? Anne swept her gaze across Kyle. Move! Kyle hurriedly explained, Miss Anne, please don't misunderstand. That woman inside does have a little problem, but I'm afraid you'll misunderstand when you see her. So I tried stopping you just now, but you should trust that Darren would never do that sort of thing. Anne said casually, I won't misunderstand anything. I just wanted you to make way. Why are you so nervous? Really? Seeing that Anne didn't look angry, Kyle moved aside hesitantly. In the next second, bang! The door of the study was kicked open by Anne. Kyle, Ugh, didn't she say she wouldn't misunderstand? Episode 313, Boorish Little Angel. Kyle was dumbstruck as he watched Miss Anne kicking open the door in her floral dress and high heels. The door toppled over with a loud crash. Then she simply stepped over the door on the floor and entered slowly. After the door was kicked down, 
Anne immediately saw the situation in the study. Darren was behind the desk looking through a thick stack of documents. If one took a closer look, they would see that he seemed quite distracted and he would glance at the wall from time to time. A sweet and adorable girl stood a couple steps away in front of the desk and was reporting something to Darren in a gentle voice. The girl's style of dress and makeup were very similar to hers. Even her stature and mannerisms were almost identical to hers. Anne's expression changed when she saw that girl. After hearing the loud crash, the girl screamed in shock. Oh! Get out! Anne didn't even take a glance at the girl. After she tossed out those two words, her eyes turned to Darren directly. Chairman Alter, this... The frightened girl looked at Darren resentful. From the door, Kyle hurriedly made his hints to the girl. Miss, why are you still standing there? Hurry and come out. Assistant Sanchez has something to tell her master. The woman didn't have a choice and reluctantly left. The moment Darren saw Anne, his stone-cold eyes glistened in an instant like stars falling from the galaxy, and they were fixated on her. You're back. There's something wrong with this guy's reaction, right? I entered by kicking the door down, okay? Yet he's still so calm and composed. Doesn't he know that I'm fuming? Weren't you going to arrive later tonight? Darren asked. Anne strode towards Darren and slammed the table. What? Are you disappointed that I came back earlier and ruined your night, huh? Darren was confused. What? Anne raged in anger. Stop pretending. That woman who offered that tribute to you. It's so late. You must have had a great time chatting with her, right? Darren's eyes turned gloomy. Woman? When Anne saw that he was still feigning ignorance, she nearly exploded. That's right, that female secretary. From her style of dress to her makeup and hairstyle, she looks almost identical to me. Even the way she acts is identical. She's obviously imitating me on purpose. Don't tell me you couldn't tell that someone brought this woman here intentionally as a tribute to you. Darren replied directly, Nope. Anne nearly choked from anger, and she slammed the table once again. Liar! That woman was speaking so coyly. What about those little coquettish glances she gave you? How could you not know she was seducing you? Darren stared plainly at Anne for a few seconds. The girl was furious. Her cheeks were red, and it was as if there was a furnace burning in her eyes. Her gaze was bright and emotional, and he was shaken to his core by her beauty. What stirred his heart most was that she's getting mad at this. Under Anne's fuming gaze, Darren slowly reached out and grabbed the back of her head, then kissed her on the lips. From getting kissed all of a sudden, Anne blinked and went blank. She pushed him away angrily, but failed and was still locked in his embrace. Hey, I'm mad, all right? Could you take this more seriously? Darren's pupils darkened, and in the next second, he kissed her soft and red lips again, and his voice was muffled between her teeth. You seduced me. The moment he touched the girl's lips, he seemed to have found a place where he belonged and was immediately appeased after all those days of longing for her. And, what? Since when did I seduce him? How does this man's brain work, huh? He actually counterattacked. She hadn't seen him for many days. His coolness and nonchalance turned into nothingness, and his kiss became more intense, like a blazing ball of fire about to exhaust her completely. Anne was almost enchanted by his beauty. She finally regained her senses after a long time and straightened up before she continued complaining. Don't you dare give me that honey trap. I went on a work trip and worked so hard, yet you actually cheated on me. How could you face me like this? I didn't notice what she was wearing, how she acted, or how she looked, Darren said. Anne wanted to say, are you blind? But Darren continued after a pause. I was thinking of you. Anne, what? Where did this sudden bout of sweet nothings come from? This excuse is pretty bullshit, but judging by Darren's EQ, it might actually be true, eh? So the person who sent that secretary spent so much effort to find someone like this, but in the end, Darren didn't even care about how she looks? After thinking it through, Anne thought it was quite believable. All right, I'll believe you just this once. Anne coughed lightly and warned him sternly. If you dare to find another woman behind my back, I'll bring an illegitimate child back. 
Kyle was worried that something would happen inside. He hurriedly chased the little secretary away, then stood by the door and eavesdropped. Then he heard that hair-raising phrase, If you dare to find another woman behind my back, I'll bring an illegitimate child back. Kyle pictured that in his head for a moment. That's too terrifying. I'd better deal with that secretary immediately. Why are you back so soon? How did it go? Chris asked the little secretary who came back within the hour. The little secretary replied excitedly, It went very smoothly. Master wasn't as scary as I thought and directly allowed me in to make my report. He was also very gentle with me, but unfortunately, I was only inside for a while before that woman came back. Deputy Director, you know what happened? That woman actually kicked the door down and entered. I've never met such a boorish woman in my life. She's just like a savage. I was wondering how tolerant she would be, but she couldn't contain her anger at all. She's definitely making a big fuss with Ninth Master right now. I know men very well. They hate those uncouth, violent, and unreasonable women, especially for someone like Ninth Master. That woman won't live so comfortably anymore for sure. Hearing how confident the little secretary sounded, Chris calmed down. If you've really won the favor of our master, I'll double the benefits I promised you before. The little secretary lit up instantly and felt a hint of disdain in her heart. When I gain the favor of master, what's that little bit of benefit to me? <laughs> the little secretary was fantasizing about them together in her head when Chris's phone suddenly rang. The person on the other end said something, and Chris's face instantly turned gloomy. After some time, Chris hung up the phone and turned to the little secretary with a darkened expression. This is your definition of smooth? Upon seeing Chris's gloomy expression, the little secretary's delighted smile froze on her face, and she asked carefully, Deputy Director, wh what happened? Chris, you're fired. Wh what? That's impossible. At the same time, a certain great devil was looking at the boorish, violent, and unreasonable girl before him with flames in his eyes. Anne, who kicked up a fuss because she was mad, was simply the most seductive to him. Where's my cake? I'll bring it to you later. Why later? Oh, because I want to enjoy the way you look for a little while longer. Certainly, after some time, Darren brought the cake out and Anne's anger vanished immediately like the clouds. A hint of helplessness flashed across Darren's brows. Yummy. Anne took a bite and her eyes glistened. Darren watched as she ate like a little squirrel, and he asked, Why do you want to eat this all of a sudden? Anne took a big bite before she said, I don't know. I really hated almonds in the past, and I don't know what happened, but I've been craving them badly lately. She remembered Daniel liked this cake. While they were in school, many girls gave him almond cakes. I see. Darren's eyes lit up slightly. A secret hidden within. After a moment of silence... Darren looked intently at the girl's dazzling little face, becoming more and more attractive, like a butterfly coming out of its cocoon. He asked, Any other changes in your taste? Hobbies and habits? Anne thought about it. Taste? Hobbies and habits? I didn't really pay much attention to them. Darren looked very serious. Think carefully. Anne rubbed her chin, blinked, and thought about it very carefully. Uh, I'm starting to like you more. Does this count? Darren, of course. Episode 314, Weird White Head. As Anne was away for quite a long time, her work had piled up at Dazzling, so she didn't stay over. It was already very late at night when she left Darren's place. Not long after she reached the garage, Anne scanned the area instinctively. Very soon, Anne frowned. She wasn't sure why she felt somewhat uneasy, like there was someone staring at her in the dark. Anne shrugged it off and thought she was simply too tired from the past few days. She opened the car door and drove away. On the way back to the apartment, Anne opened the car windows and tried her best to keep herself awake. It was late at night. The crescent moon hung high in the sky, and with the night wind blowing gently, she felt pretty relaxed and content. Not long after, the car slowed down. Anne frowned as she read the road sign ahead with a throbbing headache. 
there was road work ahead and cars weren't allowed to pass. Anne didn't have a choice but to make a U-turn and drive on the lane on the left side. The road conditions weren't too bad and there weren't many cars coming in her direction. Anne turned on the music and stepped on the accelerator. She disappeared within seconds. Swish! Suddenly, a shadow flashed past Anne's eyes. Anne didn't have any idea what happened. She only heard a loud bang and felt a violent impact. Anne slammed on the brakes almost instinctively. The car drifted slightly and left black skid marks about 10 meters long. At this moment, Anne sat in the driver's seat with her heart thumping. She seemed to have seen a shadow flash by just now. Then she knocked into something. Ac- accident? Anne hadn't fully returned to her senses. She didn't slow down at all, and with that speed and impact just now, even someone with a copper head and iron skull would have definitely been crushed. After ten seconds later, Anne hurriedly opened the door and stepped out of the car. Her two headlights were still flickering and illuminating the path ahead, but Anne couldn't see the pedestrian she knocked into. At this moment, Anne realized the front of her car was dented from the violent impact, and she also saw how strong the impact was. I'm doomed. Anne panicked and looked around anxiously. Anne searched all around, yet she couldn't find anything out of the ordinary. Anne walked to her car swiftly and turned on her phone flashlight. She bent over and looked under the car carefully. Anne didn't dare to open her eyes. She was afraid she would find a dismembered corpse under her car. However, there was nothing at all save for a little gas leakage. Huh. Anne straightened up and was perturbed. Could it be that I didn't hit a person just now? But thinking about it again, Anne felt something was off. There was nothing at all, and the car couldn't have knocked into air. Furthermore, even if she knocked into a dog or cat, it wouldn't have dented the car so badly. And if she had really knocked into a cat or dog, it should leave a corpse at least. Could it be that I knocked into a lion or a tiger? Anne scanned her surroundings. Although she was in the suburbs and there shouldn't be wild animals scuttling around for her to knock into, right? Anne looked at the dent carefully. Judging by the shape of this dent, it was definitely a human she knocked into. Also, Anne saw a few strands of white hair. They probably belonged to an elder. Anne shivered. A hint of fear appeared in her eyes, and she started thinking about that horror movie she watched before. Could it be that it was a ghost? It can't be, right? Anne felt a gust of cold wind blowing against her back, and she shuddered. With the speed of a hundred-meter sprint, Anne hurriedly opened the car door and sat in the car. After she tried her best to calm down, Anne took out her phone and initially thought of calling Darren, but she was afraid he would worry. As she gave it a second thought, she thought she'd better hand it over to the police to handle. What's the number of the traffic police, huh? Anne raised her head and mumbled to herself. The traffic police number should be 110. All of a sudden, a sweet and gentle voice rang out in the car. 110 is the number for the Ministry of Public Security. I think the traffic police number should be... Before Anne completed her sentence, her eyes instantly constricted. If it wasn't for the limited space in the car, she would have already jumped. Beads of cold sweat ran down Anne's forehead. From the rearview mirror, Anne realized there was a young man sitting in the back. She hadn't even noticed when he entered. The man had snow-white hair that touched his waist, delicate features, and below his brows was a pair of radiant eyes that seemed capable of capturing one's soul. His face was like a piece of jade, and his eyes were like the stars. He was sitting there silently, yet he looked so elegant. His pair of elegant eyes landed on Anne, and he gave a faint smile. This man seemed to have walked out from a picture. He had a mysterious aura around him, and he seemed to be able to suck one's soul in, leaving one unable to resist him. However, Anne wasn't in a state to admire him at all. She looked at the man in the back like she had just seen a ghost. Miss, you knocked into me just now. The man broke the silence, and he chuckled softly as he looked at Anne with that pair of eyes that could draw one's soul out. After he was done speaking, he leaned forward and got closer to Anne. 
However, at this moment, Anne used all her strength and punched the guy's flawless face almost instinctively. Currently, Anne's mind was in a whirl. She had just gotten into an accident and crashed into someone at full speed. Logically speaking, for a normal adult, they probably would have been crushed to pieces after being knocked with that impact. Yet this man didn't even have a scratch on him. Only three words echoed in Anne's head. A moving corpse. Anne wanted to open the car door and escape, but that man actually held her back. Big bro, I I didn't do it on purpose. Anne's face was filled with fear. Oh, no problem, it doesn't hurt at all anyway. The man smiled warmly and courteously. You're... you're fine? Anne finally had the courage to scan the man, and he really seemed like he was all right. But it was exactly because he was fine that freaked her out, all right? Any normal human being would have been dead by now. Even if he wasn't dead, he should have been severely injured, yet this person was completely fine. Be more careful when you're driving next time. You were lucky to have knocked into me. What would you have done if you knocked into some other pedestrian? The man nagged like a senior. Yes, 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 big bro, you're right, big bro. Are, are, you, are you a human or a ghost? Anne asked carefully. The man was taken aback by her question. You thought you sent me to my death? Anne knitted her brows. Didn't he die from this crash, huh? At this moment, she looked at this man with long white hair that reached his waist. He didn't seem to be what she thought he was. The situation made Anne a little flustered, and she couldn't think clearly. I'm a human, not a ghost, the man chuckled softly. Anne was astonished. Did I really knock you down just now? Anne stared at the white-haired man, and she looked even more puzzled. The car's already so dented, yet he's still alive. It did hurt a little. The white-haired man complained and nodded with a look of certainty. Are you really all right? Do you want me to take you to the hospital? Anne knitted her brows. I'm fine. Don't worry. The white-haired man smiled. Well, that's good then. Anne nodded then said, Compensate me now. Upon hearing what Anne said, the white-haired man was stunned. You knocked into me, yet you're asking me for compensation? That's what I said. Although I was the one who knocked into you, you're perfectly fine while my car is not. Anne opened the car door and pulled the white-haired man out. She then pointed at her car. Look at this. My car is so damaged thanks to you, so you can forget about leaving until you pay up. Miss, fortunes and riches are just superficial objects. You can't bring them to the grave with you, so don't be so greedy. Anyway, I don't have a single cent. The white-haired man shook his head. I don't care. You've damaged my car so badly, you must pay up, Anne insisted. Where did you learn this unreasonable behavior from? The white-haired man stood rooted to the ground and looked suspiciously at Anne. Before Anne could speak, the white-haired man suddenly laid next to Anne's feet. You, you've injured me. You have to pay for my medical bills. Since when did I hit you? Anne was taken aback. Just a few moments ago in the car, you punched me. Hurry, pay for my medical bills. I can't take it anymore. The white-haired man looked like he was in tremendous pain. And oh, I was in shock in the car, so I did punch him, but that was over half an hour ago. This white-haired man only started screaming in pain now. This arrow shot back at me is a little too long, huh? Enough. Stop pretending. I'll just waive the compensation for my car, Anne sighed. I suddenly realized that your punch wasn't so bad, and I feel slightly better now. The white-haired man slowly stood up. <laughs> Anne laughed. So you were faking it, huh? You still have to pay up for the damage. I... I can't handle this pain anymore. I think you punched me too hard. Hurry, pay for my medical bills. The white-haired man looked like he was in pain, and he laid back on the ground. And, oh, why didn't I knock him to death just now? Finally, Anne negotiated with the white-haired man. Neither of them would extort from the other. After the white-haired man agreed to it, he stood up. I'll get going if there's nothing else. Anne was about to get into the car. Upon seeing this, the white-haired man grabbed Anne and stopped her. You still gotta compensate me. What? Anne was shocked. Didn't we just make an agreement? Why is he asking me for money again? We settled on the punch, but not the car accident. You still gotta pay up. The man was firm. 
Aren't you all right? The corners of Anne's lips twitched. I, I can't take it anymore. I almost died from this accident. You gotta compensate me today. The man acted like he was in agony, and he laid on the ground for the third time. Episode 315, Money Scoundrel. Watching the amazing actor before her, Anne was dumbfounded and wished she could give him one tight slap. Before Anne could say a word, an SUV came speeding in their direction. Anne and the white-haired man were in the middle of the road, yet the SUV didn't seem to have the slightest intention of slowing down at all. Instead, it accelerated faster and faster, coming straight for Anne. At that instant, Anne retreated backward at lightning speed. Swish! The SUV went by in a flash and didn't knock into Anne. Its speed didn't decrease and was about to knock into the white-haired man who was playing dead on the ground. The white-haired guy stood up instantly and his movements were swift. He actually managed to dodge. In the next second, the SUV stopped and the door was opened. Three men dressed in black stepped out of the car. The one leading the group looked like he was in his 30s and was expressionless. He merely glanced at Anne before he made a gesture of slitting his throat to the other two men behind. Seeing this, Anne furrowed her brows. She felt quite uneasy before and felt that someone was following her. Not long afterward, these people showed up wanting to kill her. Rose sent you guys? Anne probed. Hearing that, the three men in black went blank and one of them instinctively blurted out, Who's Rose? Judging by their reactions, they didn't seem to be lying. It's not Rose, Anne thought to herself. From what Anne knew about Rose in her previous life, with her cautiousness, she wouldn't choose a time like this to deal with her. Furthermore, she wasn't a threat to Rose at the moment, so there wasn't any reasonable explanation for Rose to send killers after her. But if it's not Rose, who else would send people to assassinate me? Anne's mind was working rapidly, yet she couldn't find any clues. Initially, Anne guessed it might be Frederick and Ronald who sent these people to deal with her. But thinking about it more carefully, it wasn't realistic. When she was in Myanmar, she started a feud with those two and embarrassed them thoroughly. Everyone knew that if something happened to her at this critical point in time, they would be the first suspects. With Ronald and Frederick's shrewdness, they would never do something so foolish. Without giving Anne time to think, the three men in black charged forward and surrounded her. In the blink of an eye, the three of them attacked her at the same time. How fast! Anne was slightly surprised. These three people were very skilled, and even Anne felt a little bit pressured. With three of them attacking at the same time, each move could get her killed, and every single move was murderous. Currently, the white-haired man was standing nearby, and his clear eyes were focused on Anne's counter moves. He raised his brows. This girl's moves. Do you need help? Very soon, the white-haired man stepped forward and approached Anne. Yes! Anne was very straightforward. You do? The white-haired man nodded. Give me money, then. I'll help you if you give me money. There's no free lunch in this world, don't you agree? Anne was speechless. Is money all he thinks about, huh? A hundred thousand. A hundred thousand, and I'll help you. What do you think? The white-haired man followed Anne closely. Fifty thousand. I won't haggle any more. This is the lowest price. Give me fifty thousand, and I'll help you, the man hurriedly said. One hundred dollars. Anne extracted her body out of the fight for a moment and frowned. One hundred dollars? Are you trying to chase a beggar away? The white-haired man didn't bother with Anne anymore. Instead, he turned to those three men in black. Do you guys need help? Give me one million dollars and I'll help you guys settle this. She had never seen someone so shameless before. Those men in black were obviously normal people. So when they heard what the white-haired man said, they were all dumbfounded. Get lost, one of the men bellowed. I, you really don't want to consider, dear? Don't get in the way, otherwise we'll kill you as well. I'll lower the price a bit. How about $100,000? $50,000? I can't go any lower. You're asking for it. The three men in black couldn't take it any longer. They looked at one another and charged towards that white-haired man at once, ready to eliminate...
the person in the way first. The white-haired man smiled faintly. <laughs> it's really inexpensive. You're buying three lives with 50,000, eh? Anne stared at the man. What sort of person is he exactly? Even after her car was so damaged, he was still fine. Even though she knew there were a couple of martial arts aristocratic families in Country Z, their bodies could withstand a large degree of force after training to a certain standard. And having copper skin and iron skull wasn't hearsay. Wasn't it a little too scary that he wasn't even afraid of being hit by a car? Moreover, his expression remained the same even when he was facing these three killers. His skills might even be better than Nameless Knee and Gang. Could it be that this mysterious person was a secret descendant of an expert? With that thought, the three men in black were already pouncing on the white-haired man. Following that, Anne's jaw dropped. The sound of fists punching into a body kept ringing out. The white-haired man was surrounded by the three men in black and was being beaten to a pulp. He wasn't able to retaliate at all. And, oh, I seem to have thought too far and overestimated him. So this guy is purely a scammer who's great at acting? With this skill, he had the guts to promote and sell himself to both sides to help with the fight. What was he even thinking? Seeing that the white-haired man had no strength to retaliate at all, the three men didn't bother with him any further and hurriedly attacked Anne. Anne's eyes lit up, and she focused all her energy on fighting back. She was wrong about this strange white-haired man, but she was right about these three men. Judging from how they fought just now, these three were experts, and just dealing with one of them would be tiring, not to mention all three at the same time. And this place was in the middle of nowhere. In a moment, countless thoughts flashed across Anne's mind. However, just as she was thinking about how to deal with them, those men in black fell to the ground without a sound all of a sudden, one after another. Anne was stunned. What just happened? Could it be that white-haired man? But how could he take away three people's lives in a split second? What sort of skill is that? Alas, Anne finally saw the white-haired man clearly. Behind those men in black, the white-haired man had a gun in his hand, and there was a silencer attached to the gun. All she saw was the white-haired man blowing his gun. He patted the dust on his shirt away and said in disgust, What era is this? People still fight? Which tomb did you guys come out from? Once the white-haired man was done speaking, he stepped on the three men and walked towards Anne. He stretched out his slender fingers and said, Hand it over. Oh, what? Anne was still in a daze. White-haired man, $100. You promised. I thought he didn't agree to it. He's actually not even letting go of $100? White-haired man, what? You don't have the cash? You can send it through net banking. Anne held her head. Why do I keep bumping into such weird people after being reborn? However, since she was reborn, her coping mechanisms were quite strong. If it was anybody else, he or she would have probably been confused and gone crazy. You don't do net banking? What about a card? The white-haired man was already taking out his card machine in haste. Anne took out her phone and added to his account helplessly. The two of them added each other as friends on social media. Then, Anne saw that his username was Lonely Top Dog, and his display picture was a photo of himself. If it wasn't for his good looks, this head of white hair would make him look like a punk. His biography was truly hard to explain in a few words. How lonely it is to be invincible. How empty is it to be invincible. Alone at the top with a cold wind howling, who could understand my loneliness? The white-haired man smiled and accepted the money. Then he suddenly stared at her and asked, Miss, who taught you those moves just now? Anne glanced at him and simply replied, I learned them myself. Why? Lately, various moves and strategies often appeared in her head. When the white-haired man heard that, he raised his brows. Are you sure you weren't taught by a handsome and amazing expert? Anne, I think it's because I'm special and gifted. The white-haired man choked. Miss, you're not modest at all. Anne, is there anything else? Otherwise, I need to go and repair my car. Ah, 
I suddenly remembered that I'm meeting someone for a spar. I'll get going first. The white-haired man glanced at the big dent on her car and was afraid she would ask for compensation, so he hurriedly waved and ran away without a trace. Episode 316, Betting the Air. After the white-haired man left, Anne left as well, and thankfully, the engine wasn't damaged, so she could still drive the car. Judging by the fighters' moves, she could tell they had powerful sponsors. However, these people seemed to be afraid and didn't dare to attack her openly. Just which power wants to take my life? The elders of the Alder family or Rose? Or is there a power behind the scenes that I didn't know about in both lives? In her previous life, she also encountered an assassination attempt like this. After that, she somehow died. She didn't even know how she died, so she didn't have any clues at all. And where did this white-haired man, who suddenly appeared, then disappeared, come from? It's simply puzzling. With these thoughts running through Anne's mind, she made a U-turn and drove directly to a courtyard in the suburbs. She already got Adam to gather those mercenaries she brought over from Myanmar and settled them down somewhere. With her current situation, it was the right time to build her army. When Anne arrived, those few people were all huddled together talking about their new boss. Little Lolita held her face. Didn't expect that the Black Widow would be so pretty. She's even prettier than how they described her in those rumors. The fatty shook his head. Of course she's pretty. She drinks the blood of young girls like you to maintain her looks, eh? The guy with long hair said, Why do you think the Black Widow would create this identity and hide in the Alder family? The bearded man glanced at him and said, Baby, you're so dumb. Do you even need to ask? Obviously it's for a man. Everyone knows the Black Widow loves good-looking men. It was rumored that even though the master of the Alder family is brutal and violent, he's extremely handsome. Boss entered the Alder family with a hidden identity. What other reason could it be other than to sleep with him, huh? Anne, who was standing at the door, pursed her lips. Boss! The few of them immediately stood up when they saw Anne and their faces turned pale. The elderly man hurriedly explained, Madam, please ignore the two of them. They didn't mean it. Little Lolita was so frightened that she cried, Mommy, I don't want to be sucked dry of my blood. I don't want to be a human puppet. The bearded man's legs trembled. Boss, I I was wrong. I was wrong. I shouldn't have run my mouth. The guy with long hair quickly explained, Yes, 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 boss, don't stoop to Bobby's level. Boss, there must be a very important mission, which is why you're hiding in the Alder family. We know, we know. Anne strode over and sat down lazily on the black leather sofa. She glanced at the trembling and terrified people. No, I just want to bed Darren. She was racking her brains for an explanation, but it was fine now. They saved her the trouble. The group of five mercenaries choked on their words. (coughs) The long-haired man nearly choked to death on his own saliva. He struggled for a long time before he managed to say, (coughs) "Uh, That, then, I hope boss uh, can bed him soon. The fatty obediently said, Boss, do you need some help with that? Uh, I have a type of medicine that allows you to do whatever you want to him. No matter how good-looking he is, he'll listen to you. And no need. The guy with long hair mumbled, Stupid fatso, what do you know, huh? That's not fun at all. With boss's abilities, it'd be so easy if she wants to force it on him. The fatty immediately replied, Well, that's true, that's true. I was being nosy. At this moment, the elderly asked, Madam, it's so late. Do you have something you need to tell us? Anne warned them. From today onwards, you guys will follow me around, and I'll change your identities. Also, none of you are allowed to divulge my identity to anyone. Understand? Yes. Thank you, boss. The five of them shouted at the same time. Anne assigned them some tasks before returning to the apartment. Behind her, the five mercenaries watched as Anne left and started whispering among themselves. 
It's been a close call for us all this time. If it wasn't for the Rose of Death's appearance, we wouldn't be here today, the long-haired man sighed. Thinking back to those days when they were on the run, the five people had a gloomy expression as they recalled their fallen brothers. The fatty said, We're a new team. Should we give something nice to Boss to win her favor and to thank Boss for saving us? What should we give her then? I like fluffy little bears. How cute would that be? Little Lolita asked. The adults are talking. Kids should move aside. The fatty shoved little Lolita away and moved closer to the long-haired and bearded man. Boss couldn't bed the older family's master after so long, so she must be really thirsty. Why don't we offer her a few handsome men? I think that's not a bad idea. I think that would work. Late at night, Anne laid on her bed, unable to fall asleep. Too many things had happened recently. Thinking about that white-haired man she saw that day, Anne picked up her phone and looked through her social media page. Which secret expert would exchange their username and personal details with someone they just met? It's really strange. Anne was thinking about it when she realized that the white-haired man had updated his nickname about an hour ago. What's even lonelier than being invincible is not having little worryless by my side. <laughs> worryless? Anne stared at the word on her screen. Is that a name or something else? It looked quite familiar. The next morning, dazzling media. You're finally done having fun? Mark whined. Anne grinned. I brought some gifts for Daddy, Mommy, and you. Mark's expression changed slightly as he mumbled, At least you have some conscience. We're going to the old residence tonight, right? Anne asked. Yeah. Once she brought this up, Mark's face turned dark. Can we not go? Aren't things going well for us? Why must we go back and get bullied? Anne swept her eyes across him and her gaze was icy cold. I've said this before. You must win the Sanchez family back. Did you forget how they treated Mom and Dad? Oh. Mark was embarrassed after receiving Anne's icy glare, and he rubbed his nose. Of course, I want that too, but with our current abilities and Grandpa and Grandma's prejudice against us, it's as hard as ascending to the skies. Anne looked at him. You think Grandpa and Grandma's trust in them is so strong that it can't be broken? evening at the Sanchez family's old residence. The two seniors had already heard about Mark's involvement in the movie and the fact that he had won so many big awards. They also knew about him serving as the vice president of the Fashion Association. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done something so groundbreaking as inviting him over for dinner for the very first time. It was a Sanchez family clan gathering today, so many friends and relatives were present. The second Anne and Mark appeared, they attracted quite a bit of attention. With their looks, this pair of siblings was simply too eye-catching when they stood next to each other. Dira looked at the siblings who were very pleasing to the eyes, and her expression turned warm. Grandma! After being nudged awake by Anne, Mark kept his spirits up and walked towards the two elderly. Grandma, I brought a gift for you and Grandpa. Take a look and see if you like it. It's enough that you're here. Why did you bring us gifts? Although that was what Dira said, she was still very satisfied. Mark looped his arm onto Dira's arm intimately. I've earned some money, so the first thing I should do is buy you presents, obviously. Dira was relieved to hear that, and she said, Mark, you're finally starting to be more sensible now. Lately, your performance isn't bad, and when I bumped into Chairman, he even praised you. Did he praise me for getting the good jeans from Grandma? Your fantastic taste in fashion? Oh, you are. Oh. Seeing that Dara was so happy with Mark sucking up to her, Lily gritted her teeth. Lily strode over and mumbled, Mom, I heard Mark is a stylist for a small subsidiary company under Star Show. How could our people from Nash Media work for Star Show? If this comes out, what would people think? Mark sneered. Second aunt... I'm afraid you're quite shallow, huh? As the saying goes, learn from the foreigners in order to gain command of them. We have to know ourselves and the enemy. Then we'll be able to emerge victoriously. I'm working at Star Show in order to find out more about them and understand the way they work. Behind him, old Master Sanchez walked over and nodded. What Mark said makes sense. Lily didn't have anything to say. Her face was covered in resentment. 
She couldn't tolerate it and wanted to continue when a little hand tugged at her arm lightly, asking her to stop. Episode 317, Game On. Brooke was wearing a beautiful light blue evening gown, and she walked over to Dira. Grandma, I have good news. We've reached an agreement to collaborate with Splendid Pictures for our key TV series this year. When Dira heard that, she directed all her attention to Brooke. Really? Splendid Pictures was the country's top movie production company, synonymous with the word big. When Mark heard that, his eyes turned gloomy. While he was still struggling at a small subsidiary company, Brooke had already reached a level that was beyond his reach. Lily looked at Mark's deflated expression, and her happiness was restored. Oh, my Brooke is outstanding. Everyone says she's educated and well-balanced and has a pure heart and spirit. Even Ryan's parents keep saying she's smart and capable. Many friends and relatives of the Dyer family keep asking if Brooke has an elder or younger sister who they could get to know, and I immediately thought of Anne. I wanted to play matchmaker, but was afraid that... Lily was praising Brooke while bringing up the Dyer family. She was directly stabbing Anne in the heart and even pretended to be hesitant to speak up. What she meant was that Brooke had a cousin, but she couldn't introduce her because she might bring down the entire family's reputation. Lily, what do you mean by that? Are you trying to throw shade on someone? Don't forget who the marriage was arranged for in the first place. You stole something that belonged to Anne, yet you're still acting so smug here. Aren't you ashamed at all? Mark held it in earlier and didn't say anything, but listening up to this point, he finally reached his limit. Anne glanced at Mark. If she was the Anne from her previous life, she would have reacted much more strongly than Mark. In her previous life, she resented that Brooke always pretended to be generous, elegant, high and mighty, and they always stepped on their family whenever they could. Just thinking about the fact that Brooke had stolen her fiancé, whenever Brooke simply opened her mouth to speak, that would be enough to cause Anne to lose control. Furthermore, there was Lily fanning the flames by the side. Each time they returned to the old residence, she would cause a ruckus. Even if the two elderly didn't like her mother, she was still their granddaughter. They chased her out of the house only because she utterly embarrassed the Sanchez family many times and insisted on cutting all ties with the family. The two elderly had run out of patience for her, which was why she was in this state. And the present Anne obviously wouldn't do something so silly. Upon hearing Mark's questioning, Lily looked surprised. Mark! What are you trying to say? I merely wanted to play matchmaker for Anne, but was afraid Anne would think I'm too nosy and get upset. How am I throwing shade, huh? But I have to ask you what you mean by that. Stole what that belonged to Anne? Ryan broke up with Anne before he got together with our Brooke. It was done openly and above board, and the two of them are in love. You really shouldn't go around talking like that. Everyone knew how Anne was like in the past. Look at your conscience and ask yourself if it was you. Who would you pick? With relationships, you can't force anything. Open and above board. Two of them are in love, huh? She set me up, then threatened my father and finally hooked up with Ryan, slowly destroying our family completely. Lily spoke while she observed the reactions of Anne and Mark calmly. She wasn't afraid these two would cause a ruckus. It would be best if they could start a big one. That would be exciting. Lately, she noticed that the two elderly were starting to soften and her head started hurting. Mark was so mad that he nearly charged towards Lily. You... At this moment, Anne, who hadn't spoken at all, pulled Mark back casually, then smiled widely and walked towards the two elderly, Lily and Brooke. She said with crystal clear eyes, Brother... You've misunderstood Second Aunt. How could she mean it that way? Second Aunt really liked Ryan before, and now that he's with Brooke, Second Aunt is just really happy. So she simply said stuff like how the Dyer family fancies Brooke. Furthermore, Brooke is really amazing. Brooke is now my role model, and as for Ryan, he's very compatible with Brooke, so I sincerely give them my blessings. I hope that they can get along well. 
Otherwise, I wouldn't have taken the initiative to cancel the engagement at Grandpa's birthday banquet that time. I did that because I don't want Brooke and Ryan to be affected by me. I was too ignorant and willful in the past and made Grandma and Grandpa so worried and disappointed. Thankfully, their second aunt and Brooke by their side. Hearing what Anne said, Lily looked like she had just seen a ghost, and Brooke furrowed her brows as well. Mark was obviously dumbstruck. Dara looked at her granddaughter carefully. Not only did she change her style of dress, but even her character had also changed quite a bit. Although she was still doubtful, she still said, It's great that you think this way. Tyron Sanchez's cold and sour expression warmed up a little. You're finally behaving properly. Anne walked up to Lily and took out a small box. She opened it and there was a jade beaded bracelet inside. Second Anne, I went to Myanmar for holiday and specifically bought you a jade beaded bracelet. It's not expensive, but I picked it out very carefully. I hope you like it. Lily looked doubtful and skeptical. This brat, what's with the drastic change in attitude and what tricks does she have up her sleeve? Seeing that Lily was in a daze, Anne looked hurt and retracted her arm slightly. I was rude. Sorry. This thing is so cheap, it's not consistent with second Anne's status at all. Lily hurriedly accepted the item and hid the disdain in her eyes. She smiled. Not at all. It's seldom that Anne is so nice. I really like it. Thank you. The old man was pleased to see this. He nodded and said in a serious tone, Not bad. This is how a family should be. Don't keep fighting anymore. He was very satisfied with Anne's performance today. They chatted for a bit before Mark couldn't hold it in any longer, and he pulled Anne aside. Anne, have you lost your mind? Never mind that you're speaking so nicely to that woman, but you even gave her a gift? Anne stroked the rose petals calmly. You think I should squabble with her like you did? If you cause a ruckus today, those good impressions Grandpa and Grandma had of us would go down the drain. But we don't have to be so submissive with her, right? Mark clenched his fist tightly. Then he thought of how Anne swallowed her pride, humbled herself, and suffered grievances for him. He felt unbearably awful. He'd rather see her being willful and making a scene. Anne. Mark looked at Anne with a firm gaze. Your brother will definitely get back everything that belongs to us. I'll never let you suffer again. Upon seeing how serious he was, Anne's expression turned gentler. Yes, I believe that you can do it. Behind them, Lily suddenly walked over. Just a vice chairperson of the Fashion Association. Yet your ego is ascending to the skies. If our Brooke was like you, wouldn't she have to beat a gong and set off firecrackers every single day? You actually wanted to snatch a man away from our brook. Why don't you see and take a look at your reflection? See what kind of person you are. Mark recalled what Anne said and didn't want to quarrel with Lily. He glanced at her, controlled his temper, and ignored her. Lily became even more arrogant when she saw that the two of them didn't dare talk back. She scoffed and continued, Mary, that bitch couldn't even defeat me, and you two bastards still want to try to fight me, huh? How naive. In the next second, there was a resounding slap. Anne used all her force and landed a slap on Lily's face. Lily's head tilted to the side from the tight slap. She was in disbelief and returned to her senses only after a long while. She held her face, which was imprinted with five distinct finger marks, and she screeched, Little bitch, you hit me! You actually hit me! Slap! Anne didn't even think twice, and waved her palm once again, giving her another slap. Then she straightened her sleeves and lifted her eyes. Yes, I hit you. So what? This slap was even harder, and Lily's face started to swell with a burning sensation. Lily was completely stunned by these two unexpected slaps in a row. Mark stood rooted to the ground in a daze. Seeing his younger sister's aggression and rampant expression, he couldn't return to his senses at all. Uh, I thought we agreed to restrain ourselves. Mom, Brooke walked over. When she saw the finger marks on Lily's face, she cried out, Anne, what are you doing? How could you hit her? Shortly after, Isaac walked over as well. Little bitch, are you trying to revolt? 
The commotion caught the attention of the two elderly very quickly as Tyron Sanchez and Dira started walking towards them. Lily held her red and swollen face as darkness shrouded her eyes. And you'll see how you're going to die this time. What's going on? The two elderly walked over. Lily had already prepared her complaints. However, just a second before the two elderly walked past the flowering shrubs and reached them, Anne suddenly took a step forward and her body tilted as she fell onto Lily's feet. Before she fell, her fingers hooked onto the beaded jade bracelet that Lily had put on her wrist as an act earlier. She pulled it off and threw it on the ground. Lily hadn't reacted to what happened. You, Anne... Seeing that Anne had fallen all of a sudden, Mark was taken aback. He leaped up and went over immediately. Anne grabbed hold of Mark's hand and gave him a subtle squeeze on his hand. Mark was dumbfounded. She's acting? Tyron Sanchez and Deera had just arrived when they saw Anne on the ground and immediately walked past Lily as they rushed to Anne. What happened here? Anne, what happened? Anne's eyes reddened. Grandpa, Grandma, I'm... I'm fine, I'm fine. This has nothing to do with second aunt. I fell down by myself by accident. Hearing what Anne said, the two elderly turned to Lily. Your second aunt pushed you? Lily panicked. Dad, Mom, how could I possibly? Tyron Sanchez said sternly, What's the rush? Let Anne speak first. Anne looked like she was deeply hurt. Just now, I was strolling around the little garden when I heard second aunt and Brooke talking. They said, What did they say? Tyron Sanchez probed urgently. Anne pursed her lips. Second aunt called brother and I little bastards. She said we're not a threat to Brooke's position at all. She also said that she has the final say in this family. She won't allow us to return home. We will never be able to return home in our lifetimes. Grandpa, Grandma, brother and I really don't want to compete with Brooke for anything. We only came back because we miss Grandpa and Grandma. Why, why did Second Aunt have to say these things? Anne started sobbing. Second Aunt, she, she even threw the bracelet I gave her just now, and I, and she said she disliked such cheap things and felt disgusted wearing it. I specifically bought it for her, using an entire month's salary, so I was really mad and confronted her, but in the end, she pushed me. Wretch, you, you're making this up. Lily was furious. She hurriedly turned to the two elderly and explained, Dad, Mom, how could that be? I didn't push her at all. She was the one who slapped me twice. Tears started rolling down Anne's cheeks. Second Anne, you've got to speak with a conscience. If you didn't go overboard with your words, if you, if you didn't say Grandpa and Grandma would die someday, why would I be so mad that I hit you? Also, if you didn't push me, then did I push myself to the ground? If you're not the one who threw that bracelet, then was I the one who pulled it off your wrist and threw it on the ground? Second hand, you're being a big bully. <sighs> Lily was dumbfounded. Her eyes widened, and she nearly vomited blood from anger. She did fall over herself, and she was the one who pulled the bracelet off my wrist and threw it on the ground, okay? She only called them little bastards, yet Anne came up with so many other stories and drove a wedge between her and the two elderly with every word. Episode 318, Let's Drink. Tyron and Deera didn't quite believe what Anne said at first, but listening up to this point and seeing the beads of jade scattered all over the floor, they were already 70% convinced. If it was the Anne from her previous life, the two elderly would never have believed a word, but Anne's performance had been pretty good lately, and they were very satisfied with her tonight, so her words were more credible. Tyron Sanchez looked at Lily sternly. These past few years, the extended family had indeed held quite a lot of power and was becoming very arrogant like no one else mattered. I'm not dead yet, eh? How could she say she's the one who calls the shots in the house? Who gave her this authority? Although the extended family would inherit this household sooner or later, Tyron Sanchez was still upset. 
Dad, Mom, don't believe anything this wretch said. This wretch is trying to drag me down. I swear I never said those words. That's right. Grandpa, Grandma, I can attest to that, Brooke hurriedly chimed in. Anne wiped her tears and stood up. She bent over and picked up the beads of jade on the floor one by one. Anne didn't attempt an explanation at all. Instead, she said, Grandma, Grandpa, I'm sorry. I I caused trouble for all of you again. I thought this was my home, and I was trying really hard to change to fit in with this family. I even let go of the love of my life. But now, I guess I was wrong. Brother, let's go. Huh? Oh, When Anne called him, Mark finally returned to his senses and followed his sister in a daze. Once they left the old residence, the moment they got into the car, Anne bounced back to her languid and casual attitude as if that little pitiful girl who suffered and was bullied was simply 